working with continuous functions. In the last two videos, we did homework examples where they gave us a specified x value, and we tried to figure out whether our function was continuous or not at that specified x value. We're going to be working some more homework examples here, but they kind of switch it around for us. So the instructions on these homework examples are going to say list all values of x for which the given function is not continuous. So they don't give us an individual x value and we go from there. They give us a whole function and our job is to play devil's advocate and figure out where this guy is not continuous. So our job is to come up with the x values on our own. Now let's review what causes graphs to not be continuous. So let's review it visually first. So really, holes, because we actually have a hole in the graph, even though our point may be defined at a separate place, or when our graphs get infinitely close alongside a vertical asymptote, or because of gaps in our graph, where we have two separate pieces that don't match up, Again, if we have two separate pieces that don't match because of a vertical asymptote or purely because of a vertical asymptote. So we need to ask ourselves, what causes these things to happen in the graph? Well, we can review that real quick. So what causes vertical asymptotes? That is when our denominator is equal to zero. That causes our function to be undefined. Over here, what causes us to have two separate pieces of the graph? That is because of a piecewise function. If I go back, again, vertical asymptotes are caused when our denominator is equal to zero. Or holes in the graph is when both the numerator and the denominator equal zero because they end up canceling each other out. So if we think about all of these cases, that's going to help us decide where our graph is not continuous. Now that's just by re-examining the visuals, but let's reinforce this by looking at the formal definition of continuous functions. Our first thing is when our function is defined. So we want to do, again, the devil's advocate. We want to do the opposite. When is our function not defined? And that happens because of a few things, most specifically in the examples that we've been working through when our denominator equals zero. The other things that cause functions to not be defined is if we have the square root of a negative number. Next, what causes our limit to not exist? or what causes our left-hand limit to not match up with our right-hand limit. The only time our left-hand and our right-hand limits don't match is because we have separate pieces defined. So a piecewise function can cause our left and our right-hand limit not to match. And the third, what causes our limits and our functions to not match up? Again, the only example we have of that is something that looks like this here. And the only thing that can create this here is, again, yet another piecewise function. So to play devil's advocate, we have to figure out where our denominator equals zero, if we have square roots where they come up to be negative numbers, or where our piecewise functions do not match up. So let's use that in all of these examples. When is this function here, specifically 3 over x squared minus 36, not continuous? Well, all we have to do is, again, figure out where the denominator is equal to zero or when our piecewise function pieces don't match. Well, we don't have a piecewise function here, so that doesn't apply. So all we have to look at is where the denominator is equal to zero. So let me go ahead and just set my denominator equal to zero. This is a degree two, so I should have two answers here. I can solve it using any one of the quadratic methods. I'm going to use my factoring method because that's what I prefer best. If you prefer something else, go ahead and use it. x times x gives me x squared. 6 times 6 gives me 36. 
and difference of squares, one gives me positive, one gives me negative. I finish this up by setting each factor equal to zero. The first one gives me negative six, and the second one gives me positive six. Degree two yields me two answers. So what's happening here is these are creating vertical asymptotes on my graph, which creates my graph to not be continuous there. So list all values of x for when it is not continuous. That's at both negative and positive 6. And you're always more than welcome to check this by graphing this either by hand or by your calculator. Let's move on to a second example. This one is a piecewise function, f of x equals 3x when x is less than negative 2, and x minus 4 when x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Again, what causes a function to not be continuous when our denominators are equivalent to 0 or when our pieces don't match up? In this problem, I don't have any denominator, so I don't have to worry about that. So I have to worry about where our pieces do not match. So we might just go ahead and say, well, that's going to specifically happen at negative 2. But remember, a couple of things can happen at negative 2. So we can have an example that looks like this, where we have two separate pieces that don't match up. Or we can have an example that looks like this two pieces that do match up. If they match, then our graph is continuous. If they don't match, then our graph is discontinuous. So we have to figure out in this example if our pieces match up or not. So basically, we need to substitute negative 2 in for both parts and see whether they come up to be the same answer. So in my first part, again, basically, I'm looking for the limit as x is approaching negative 2 from my left-hand side of this function. That gives me 3 times negative 2, which gives me negative 6. And the limit as x is approaching negative 2 from the right-hand side of this function. And that gives me negative 2 minus 4, which gives me negative 6. So these answers match, which means my two pieces match up. So the only possible place where it was not continuous was at negative 2, but we just proved that that's not the case because they match up. So this is kind of a trick question. List all the values for x with our given function is not continuous. This graph is continuous everywhere. So we do not have any answers. No x values where this graph is discontinuous. Example 3 here, f of x equals 3x cubed plus 9x minus 7. I suggest you pause the video and see whether you can find all the values of x where this function is not continuous. Now this one's an easy one. Again, we want to look at where our denominator is equal to 0 or where our pieces don't match up in our piecewise function. I don't have any denominators here. I don't have any piecewise functions here. This guy is a polynomial function, and polynomials don't ever have anything tricky going on. So that means polynomials are always continuous everywhere. We don't ever have to do any work for this type of problem if our function is a polynomial. So polynomials are continuous everywhere. Again, it's kind of another trick question. If we're trying to list all x values, we don't have any x values for which this function is discontinuous. I have one more example of this. f of x equals x plus 1, for which x is less than 1, and x plus 5, which x is greater than or equal to 1. I suggest you pause the video and see whether you can figure out where this guy is discontinuous at. So again, I'm looking for where denominators are equal to zero or where piecewise functions match up. Of course, no denominators in this problem. So where do my pieces match up? At one. So I have to check specifically what is happening at one. So basically, you have to check the left-hand limit of one 
And if I do that, I get it's approaching 2. And I have to check the right-hand limit at 1. And if I do that, I get 6. So therefore, my left hand and my right hand limit do not match up. So visually, we get this example here. Two pieces where my pieces don't match. So that means at this value here is when my graph is discontinuous. So f of x is not continuous when x is equal to 1. Now we know it's continuous every place else because if I look less than 1, I have a polynomial function, and we just said polynomials are continuous everywhere. And if I look greater than 1, I have a polynomial function, and we know polynomials are continuous everywhere. So this is my last example of this type of problem. Again, you play devil's advocate, and you figure out what's happening or where are the tricky places in this problem. And most likely, that's because when the denominator is equal to 0, or when your pieces of your piecewise function don't match up. In the next video, I have one more problem that will resemble your homework problems of continuous functions.